Well, I s- <laughs> one more story about how marijuana can save the world and is going to do so many things for every- you know, I, I'm, I guess I could have just made a channel about that because at one point someone criticized me for saying that marijuana can do so many th- can do too many things like it can do everything. And I mean, I was just talking about hemp. <laughs> I wasn't even talking about marijuana. But anyway, how can cannabis clean up nuclear radiation and toxic soil? Interesting. I love this. I had to do this story. I just had to. That's all there is to it. So let's read this article together, shall we? Europe's largest steel mill is in the city of Taranto in southern Italy. In its heyday, the ILVA steel plant produced more than 10 million tons of steel every year, about 40% of all the steel made in Italy, and it currently employs about 12,000 people. This is no small deal in an area where unemployment is uh, north of 20%. Indeed, the local economy of Taranto, population 200,000, is almost entirely dependent on the steel mill, which is also one of the biggest and most deadly polluters of anywhere in the Mediterranean. Yuck. The plant is a notorious source of dioxin, and dust from the plant is believed to be the reason why Taranto's uh, lung cancer rate 30% higher than the national average. It's so toxic that farmers have been forbidden to ra- uh, from raising livestock within a 20-kilometer radius of the plant. <clears throat> In 2008, the government ordered the slaughter of thousands of sheep and other animals that were found to have excessively high levels of dioxin. The mill is also debatedly hurting the local economy. The area has a mix of nice beaches and pastoral farmland that would make it attractive to tourists if it wasn't for the deadly steel mill. Uh, The mill is currently under government control. After a saga straight out of John Grisham, health officials ordered the mill partially shut down. A move blocked by government authorities, police partially occupied the plant as a part of a criminal investigation, and its owners were ultimately arrested and jailed for committing an environmental disaster, a serious crime in Italy. Meanwhile, the steel mill is still open, uh, though producing much less steel and, you know, hopefully a lot less of the other shit. Farmers who raised sheep and made ricotta cheese for generations in the area where the steel mill was built in the 1960s. The factory may as well be going full blast, you know, to them. Uh, Vincino, Vincenzo Fornaro's farm is less than a mile from the steel mill. His entire stash of 600 sheep had to be killed over a decade ago, and he's since been forbidden from raising livestock or crops for food. So instead, as CBS News reported, he's growing weed. Not to smoke it or sell it, but to pull the steel mill's toxins out of his soil. Fernaro has planted massive strands of industrial hemp on his farm. He's employing a tactic called uh, photoremediation, or phytoremediation, in which plants are used to remove heavy metals, radioactive material, and other bad stuff from the earth. Industrial hemp has been used to clean up deadly pollutants before, perhaps most famously near the site of the deadly nuclear meltdown at Chernobyl in which, in what is now Ukraine, and where it should go not unstated, thousands of people are still at work at the power station, which produces 6% of the nation's electricity. Or <laughs> electric, electricity, I'm sorry, a little tongue-tied here. In the mid-90s, a company called Phytotech worked with researchers and a Ukraine-based seed bank to plant thousands of hemp plants in and around Chernobyl. Phytoremediation is current, uh, relatively new, somewhat amazing to consider, as plants are not exactly a new innovation. By considering there are tens of thousands of polluted sites across the United States in need of cleanup before they can be used for housing or anything else, including military bases, power stations, and industrial sites, and billions are spent each year in efforts to clean up toxic soil, the time for phytoremediation is here. According to researchers from Colorado State University, hemp is extremely effective in removing from soils the toxic element cadmium, which is convenient because cadmium uh, contamination is everywhere. It's seen in fossil fuels, old-school pesticides, and many other byproducts of human civilization. And since hemp grows quickly, has deep roots, and doesn't appear to be stunned by pollution, Hemp is one of the best plants to use in phytoremediation, despite other plants being slightly more efficient. 
Best of all, hemp used to remind, uh, remove cesium or cadmium from soil can then be put to use. Burnt as fuel, converted into oil for lubrication or other industrial purposes, used as insulation, paper, or construction material, particularly if the end product uses the stalks or seeds and not the leaves, where most of the heavy metals appear to accumulate after being removed from the soil. So you probably wouldn't want to smoke this shit. While we wouldn't necessarily want to wear or eat hemp products culled from the areas where the nuclear waste once glowed, apparently such hemp is safe in other applications. Conveniently, this presents one of the major issues in medical marijuana circles. The source material for hemp-based CBD oils the companies have been marketing as a legal cure in all 50 states. Hemp-derived CBD oil has been touted as a substitute for cannabis-based CBD oil, and demand for any source of CBD has led such companies to expand into other countries and become the first multinational cannabis-related firms. However, putting hemp with an extra cesium or cadmium into the body of someone who is already immunocompromised is probably not the best idea. So I guess they're saying I wouldn't make a CBD oil out of it either. Um, sure. I mean, we're just talking about the areas where you're absorbing these toxins from the soil. Well, then those toxins are going to end up in the buds or the leafy material. You would want to go ahead and um, not use that for medicinal purposes. But there is all, all these other uh, ways that you could use just the pulp from the stalks to make everything from con you know hempcrete building materials all the way to plastics and you know chem uh, chemical applications for other industries. So it's not like you would just be wasting the plants. Just burning them alone would create energy. So you could do that. All right, but back in Italy where hemp where the hemp near the steel mill is being used to replace, of all things, steel. Hemp activists showed off to CBS a nearby apartment building, brand new construction, made from hemp fiber. So don't be surprised if, surrounding Italy's deadliest steel mill, you'll soon see a ring of hemp plants. Um, and hopefully we see that around some of these polluted places in America, too. Um, I heard there was some efforts to be to do stuff just like that in West Virginia where the uh, coal mines used to be and the coal burning uh, facilities, um, you know, stuff like that. But uh, interesting stuff. Um, I'm excited about the hemp industry expanding. The more it expands, the more excited I get. And, yep, that's, <laughs> once again... <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but marijuana, it's going to fix everything if we let it. <laughs>